SNES drunk? Did you know some Super Nintendo games can support up to four players? Even five in some cases, and more than just sports games, I swear. Hudson Soft, creators of the Bomberman series, developed this SNES multi-tap that you can plug into one controller port while reserving the other port for a fifth player. They later developed one to look like Bomberman, if you're into that, and many, many other accessories like the Tribal Tap are available as well. This video is a look at some of the games that best utilize the four-player functionality. First and most plainly obvious, this is the Super Bomberman series. Only the first two games were released in the United States, but there are three more for Super Famicom that are perfectly playable, even if you can't understand Japanese. While we're here, let's very quickly go over the differences in multiplayer game modes for each Bomberman game. Now please bear in mind, I'm sure I'm missing some differences here, like some power-ups or some stages that are only in one game and not the others. The first game just features the traditional four-player battle mode with 12 stages to choose from. It's fun and straightforward, but the later games have more game modes. The second game features four-player battle and a tag team battle mode, also with 10 stages, and there's a feature called the Golden Bomber. The winner of each battle is rewarded a random item they can use in the next game with six items to choose from. It could be a bomb upgrade, a speed boost, or a bomb kick, which is almost unfair. The third game, released only in Europe and Japan, allows five players and is a quantum leap ahead of Super Bomberman 2. There's way more items, available for everyone this time, there's a lot more playable characters to choose from, and it introduces Louis, these kangaroo type things that hatch from eggs, and they add so much chaos and frustration to the game, it's great. One kicks bombs, one kicks blocks to trap other players, one fills an entire column with bombs, it's just the best. Not only that, but there's a soccer mini game you enter when you win a battle, and there's also the bad bomber mode, which allows eliminated players to hang out on the edge of the map and continue to screw with the other players. If I had to pick one super bomber main game to get, it's this one, Super Bomberman 3. Super Bomberman 4 includes most of what the third game has, in addition to a champion mode, but that only allows up to two players. There's also a manic mode that enables you to edit the regular battle maps with all sorts of stuff, but it's hard to utilize because it's all in Japanese, since this game only came out overseas for the Super Famicom. The soccer game was also ditched in exchange for a racing minigame. Super Bomberman 5, also only for the Super Famicom, is along the lines of the third game, and for what it's worth, it's got arguably the best single-player mode too, since it's entirely non-linear, which makes things unpredictable and interesting. You can create your own character and customize its abilities, which is cool, but yeah, I maintain that the third game is the best in the series, although really, you can't go wrong with any of the five. Next I have to mention NBA Jam Tournament Edition, and I picked that version over the original because there's more ridiculous unlockable characters and more codes that make you do stuff like dunk from 10 miles away. Even if you don't like basketball or sports for that matter, you can't go wrong with a 4 player NBA Jam game. NBA Hangtime is also 4 player if you'd rather play a slightly more updated game. The same can be said about NHL 94, there's just something so easily accessible about this game, it's the ultimate pick up and play sports game because the controls are so immediate and smooth. And again, you don't have to give a crap about hockey to have fun playing this, just skate around and hit people and get into fights. And even better, this game supports up to 5 players. There's also Smash Tennis, also known as the best Super Nintendo tennis game not named Super Tennis. This one only came out in Europe and Japan. The feel of this game is a little tougher to grasp. Everything moves pretty dang fast, but the fixed overhead camera operates the same as Super Tennis. And it's got a reliable physics engine, so if you opt for a 4 player game, everyone should be able to pick up the gameplay reasonably quickly. There's a couple racing games as well. I love the Top Gear series, and thankfully Top Gear 3000 supports up to 4 players. It's still easily the best arcade style racing game that's multi-tap compatible. For kart racing, there's Street Racer, which is really one of the best quote unquote obscure games for the Super Nintendo. Single player or multiplayer, this game should be picked up by anyone who liked Super Mario Kart. There's straight ahead racing that includes bombs, punches, and goofy karts. And the battle mode includes kart soccer, that's awesome. Alright, that's enough with the sports genre. Seems like 80% of the games that support multi-tap are sports games of some kind, so let's look at some other stuff, like Secret of Mana in Seiken Densetsu 3, where you can play up to three players. Bear in mind though, with Secret of Mana, it starts out with one player, and stays that way, off and on, for the first hour of the game or so, until you finally get both the girl and the sprite permanently in your party. I believe the same thing applies to the sequel, but I can't say for sure because there's so many different paths and characters. I know on Duran's path, it takes a long while to get a second party member, but I can't speak for the rest. Regardless, these games are two of the very best of their kind, and the fact that they're multiplayer up to three players makes them that much better. The Peacekeepers, otherwise known as Rushing Beat Shura, is a halfway decent beat-em-up. Sadly, the regular game mode only allows for two players, but there is a kind of battle royal mode that has four players fight it out in the ring. Last fighter standing wins. This is a fun drinking game back in the day, with the winner taking a shot. 
One really goofy four-player game is Fire Striker. It's kind of like a super jazzed up version of Breakout. Instead of the usual primary colored blocks, we have this sword and sorcery theme with playable characters that take damage. You have to bounce this fireball through the walls to keep advancing. The kingdom depends on you! Oh, okay. Super Tetris 3 for Super Famicom might be the best game on this list. I mean, it's hard to beat just basic Tetris, but there's a ton of game modes and some oddball shaped pieces that you have to contend with. The Super Famicom cartridge usually goes for about $10 on eBay, and you're not going to get a better bang for your buck than that, especially for such an easily accessible party game that anyone can play. While we're on puzzle games, there's also Pieces, which has a four-player scramble mode where each player just races to put together a puzzle while accumulating the most points. This game really looks and sounds kind of dumb. I mean, you're putting together a puzzle. But it's really more than it looks, especially with a lot of people. And last but certainly not least, I want to mention my favorite wrestling game, Saturday Night Slam Masters. Even if wrestling isn't your cup of tea, you can at least laugh at these ridiculous characters. And hey, isn't that Hagar from Final Fight? Anyway, you can do a two-on-two -two Texas Tornado-style tag team match with all four players brawling in the ring at the same time. It's sort of like Peacekeepers, but with a lot more moves, more functionality, and it's just more Capcom-y. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.